I'd like to talk to you a little bit about one of the psalms that's in the lectionary for the upcoming Sunday. The psalm is Psalm 118. So let me just begin by reading that as it is in the lectionary. Psalm 118, the first two verses, and then verses 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. So you can see why this would be a psalm for us to read together on Palm Sunday. Of course, we won't be able to gather together with the palm leaves this year. I will say there's a, a creative idea that I'll post a little bit later today for something you can do at your home as a way of engaging Palm Sunday, uh, both as a family and for us to do that together as a church community. So be looking for that. But I want to look really more at, at verses about 19 through 21. Open the gates of righteousness that I may enter them and give thanks. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you've answered me and have become my salvation. You know, I, I, a lot of times when I'm reading the Psalms and the psalmist talks about his righteousness or his clean hands or his integrity, that can be tough for me to identify with. But the language in Psalm 118 today really resonated with me and partly because it resonates with Jesus' language. Go to John 10 for a minute. And listen to what Jesus says about himself. This is John 10, beginning in verse 7. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Now, we're, we're more familiar with the image of Jesus as good shepherd from a little bit later on in this chapter. But Jesus in John 10 also describes himself as the gate, the way that the sheep can come in and out of the pasture. Or if we use the language of Psalm 8, 118, the way that the sheep can come in to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, Jesus Christ. The righteous shall enter through it. How do we become righteous? By entering into Jesus, entering into who he is and what he's done, what he continues to do in us and for us and through us. As we identify with Jesus, as we walk through that gate, he in fact answers us, becomes our salvation. And because of that, we are the righteous that can walk through the gates of righteousness, entering into the temple, entering even into the Holy of Holies and giving thanks to the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it as those who've been given a full and abundant life by the gate through which we enter into the goodness of God. I hope you have a great Wednesday. God bless.